So welcome to Yoga with Smiles. Uh, it's a pleasure to bring this session on Zoom week after week. Uh, we started on Yoga Day and um, one week we do yoga and once a week we do smile tips. So today I thought I will not tell you all the topics so that it becomes interesting. Okay, and as usual I will start with a story. Okay, so just imagine that there is a very, very difficult mountain to climb. Okay, and there's a whole group of villagers climbing that mountain, you know, and it's really difficult. It's like, you know, steep and so many kilometers, uh, uh, just almost vertical. And, uh, you know, my question to you is, would you want to climb that mountain? You know, everybody is climbing. Do you, would you want to climb that difficult mountain? It's really difficult, okay? Uh, so, would you really want to do it? You have all your aches and pains and age-related issues and sometimes you can, sometimes you can't climb. I don't know, whatever it is. But if someone says, come and climb this difficult mountain, what would be your immediate reaction? Like Arunachal Pradesh, oh, remember? Nice. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in the dark, in the rain, we were climbing all kinds of things, yeah. So, would you want to climb this mountain? No, I wouldn't. Yeah, the I, general reaction I is no. I wouldn't want to try. Yeah, we don't know whether you want to try or not. So, but suppose there's a really close loved one of yours, a relative or a close friend or a real relative, someone you really, really care about. And previous night, they had gone there for a picnic. And they tell you in the morning, you know, they have not returned. We have to go searching for them. Then would you climb? Um, really close. Someone really close of yours is lost over there, you know. If they are accompanying you. Yeah, no. If someone that you are really close to no. has, has is missing in the mountain. They are missing there. And the, and the village is, whole village is going up. Yeah, they are missing on the mountain. Then would you climb the mountain, searching for them? Yeah, of course. Of course, we would. Okay, if there's a close relative of mine, who's a close friend of mine, who's missing on the mountain, I will be the first person to go running up the mountain. Okay, at that time, I will not remember my aches and my pains and my, you know, because I don't know where, but I will get the strength to go through the most steepest, most difficult, most dangerous route, I will go because I have a bigger purpose of, you know, searching for my uh, person. But, and I am committed to the other person. Okay? So now I want you to just close your, uh, all of you all, just share with me, what do you think you are good at? Any one thing. What do you think you consider yourself? I am quite good in this. Like I like my training. I think I'm quite. I'm, I like my training, so I think I'm quite a good trainer. So, like any one thing, we just share. Hmm? Um, I'm very good in counseling. Uh, okay. I mean, I am a hmm. healer, so huh. I'm okay. very good in counseling, and hmm. in a nice way, like hmm. in the sense, no condescending hmm. words or anything hmm. like that. Hmm. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Any Peaceful. one thing. Positive, very nice. soon like that. Nice. What about you? Debbie is good in hundred. So many, so many things. <laughs> I'm okay. talking about. Uh, 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 any one work, thing you consider uh, yourself like, good, huh? Hmm. I'm good in my business. Yeah. So good in your business, okay. And uh, uh, Debbie, Shoba, hmm. Rose, somebody else has joined in. Anyhow, I want you to just close your eyes, all of you. Okay, think first of all, think what is it that you're good at, okay? Debbie is very good in organizing events and stitching and so many things, okay? Rose is also so good in so many things, okay? Yes, uh, it's sweet, everything yeah. that... Baking, sweet, yeah. Yeah. Cooking, making sweets, yes, okay? Yeah, so uh, now I want you to, to, I want you to close your eyes for a minute, okay? And just think, for the first time, when you try to do what you are doing today, 
how did you feel? You know, the first time I went for training in front of an audience, I was shivering. Okay? I was so scared. And then, remember the person who supported you at that time. Somebody, somebody took one effort to give you some confidence. Somebody made an effort to teach you something. Isn't it? Just remember that person. You know? And it made such a huge difference having that person in our lives. Isn't it? Yeah? I mean, I'm so grateful. I'm Even today, when I think about that person who introduced me to this concept, you know, what I studied and what I'm doing is something totally different. But I feel so thankful for that person who took the extra effort and the extra time to guide you, to coach you, to mentor you and, you know, make you what you are today. It can be your father, it can be a teacher, it can be anybody. Okay? So that is the topic for today. Today I am going to give you certain tips on coaching, mentoring. Okay? I really feel, you know, most of us are in a stage, of, we are all 50 plus I think on this group. Most of us are all 50 plus. And we are in a stage of life where we are, where we are in a stage of life where we can, uh, we have received lots from so many people. Okay, isn't it? Yeah? And if you remember your coach or your mentor with a warm heart, okay, would you not like someone to remember you with the same feeling? Obviously, isn't it? You know, they say when you're not around, people do not bother about what you have or what you did. But people will always remember how you made them feel. Isn't it? Yeah. So it becomes a big, it becomes, it's really fulfilling. And we are all, all of us want to, we are in a stage of life where we want to contribute in some way or the other. And that is why I thought this topic would be very interesting today. So today we are going to talk about how we can be a good coach or a mentor to someone else. Okay. Now in your business, the reason you are sitting over here is because you have other people who are taking care of what is to be taken care of. And you are the one who, you know, mentor them or coach them to become capable. Isn't it? So I want you to think, what is the difference between... See, there are people who are new on the job and then we give them instructions. Do this, do that, do this, don't do that. This is how it's done. This is how it's not done. So what is the difference between that kind of instructions and being a coach? Think. What is the difference? A coach probably is doing it. Sorry, your voice is breaking. Ah. Not just. A coach is not? A coach pushes you into doing it. Okay. A coach to you, not just giving yeah. instructions. Yeah, correct. You know, that's the thing. So if you're, if you, if you're giving instructions, there's no difference between you oh. and a washing machine instruction manual. You know, all these machines and TVs and fridges and they all come with an instruction manual. Okay. The instruction manual and being an instructor, there's no difference. It's very impersonal. It is very do's and don'ts. It's very judgmental. If you don't do it, this is right. If you do it, it is right. If you don't do this is wrong. You know? But you are not you are not an instructor. Okay? The difference between an instructor and a coach is that a coach is someone who does more than give you just instructions. Okay? The see in, in when you are an instructor, you your aim is that. It's all performance oriented that you should not make mistakes. But when you're a coach, along with performance, you're also looking at the person. There is more of a personal relationship between you and the person that you are coaching. Okay? So, I want you to now to look out 
for opportunities where you can be a coach to somebody because that is where you will leave your mark in this world you know everything else will come and go but the, and I remember i always say knowledge is one thing the more you share it the more it grows it's really abundant all the other things you share it you might it might reduce so wherever you can look just remember the coach who coached you when you were new and you have to continue the cycle of coaching or the cycle of mentorship okay so this is this is a very important thing now tell me if you want to be a good coach what do you think are the skills that you need do you think you have the skills when i talk about coach it can be for anybody okay it can be personal it can be professional it's just that you're making a difference in somebody else's life and the difference in a coach is that you are you are training them you are you are you are helping them to become leaders on their own understand so even if you are not around they can they will take responsibility for whatever has to be done so there's a difference in having a team and there's a difference in having a uh, there's a difference in having leaders around you and if you are a good coach or a mentor then it will be very interesting because you will be surrounded with leaders make sense what i'm saying yeah we always say that don't do things alone okay if you do alone you can do only this much but if you do with a team you can do this much probably so, so, so much you can do if you have a team with you but the team still needs instructions you know instead of being surrounded with team how would your life be if you are surrounded with leaders think about it what you need to do is uh you need to person na you need to surround yourself with leaders does this sound interesting hmm yeah and for that you you need to coach people so that they become leaders see we live in a world where i am so scared to especially in the corporate world or in the you know official world people don't want to share their knowledge because they said oh if i take if i tell you everything then you will take my place okay but i don't think i, I there's another way of living that if you can take my place then i can do other things i can go and do i am free to do what i want to do so think about all the people in your life and think about how many leaders are there around you think about who's a leader around you are you surrounded with leaders yeah think think who's a who's a leader in your life Rina that Rina you'll have to go on mute there's a lot of background noise please think one of the biggest leader in my life you know is who my maid servant make sense make sense i have coached her so well that whether i'm at home or whether i'm not at home you know i know my house will be spick and span she's not my team member she's a leader especially for us it's very important to have a good leader in your maid servant makes makes sense yeah yeah so i i really don't have to worry about the day to day nitty gritty aspects about our house so one is a you know my maid servant anybody else you can think of your own husband okay i have coached him how to take care of himself in the kitchen so if i am there fine if i am not there then is also fine make sense so that is why you can go wherever you want because they are leaders they are leaders to take care of everything else yeah because the more you are surrounded with people who are dependent on you the more you lose your freedom 
Okay? So, yes. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so, I thought it's a very important thing. You know, we should make an effort to start, start surrounding ourselves with leaders around us. Okay? This is just to show you the importance of how important it is to create leaders around us. So, my driver was a leader. You know, he would pick up my daughter, drop her down, this, that. Even though I'm not around, he was my leader. My maid servant was a leader. I'm actually, everyone around me, you know, when you are surrounded, when you surround yourself with leaders, they will do things that you are supposed to do or that what you want to do. You know, and trust me, people will be happy if you give them responsibility. We, we don't, we, we, you know, most of the time, what happens in our stage of life is that we want to do everything ourselves. And when you want to do everything yourself, you just feel overburdened and you feel overwhelmed. Oh my God, I have to do this because we are, you know, what are the control freaks and we are cleanliness freaks. And, you know, we want everything to be done in one particular way only. And then we end up stressed. So, so think about, think about coaching as something which is, actually very very important for you to do right now make sense what i'm saying yeah yes yeah now my next question to you what are the qualities you think we should have if you want to be a good coach or a good mentor what qualities do you think you need to have delegate Okay, the quality of de de delegation. Okay, what are the different factors which should be present for you? Okay, you should be, you should have the ability to delegate things to others. Okay, that makes sense. Anything else? You should be compassionate. Very good. Okay. Uh, because you should, and when you're coaching or mentoring, you're allowing the people to make mistakes. That's a difference between an instructor. Instructor says no mistakes. The coach says Make a mistake. You will learn, and you take responsibility for their mistakes. But you allow them to make the mistakes, and most of the time their learning is by themselves. It's not that you don't have to tell them. You know, here's a problem. You can discuss the problem with them. You know, and let them come up with the solution. So, what's the second thing you said just now? I. Uh, one is delegation. One is being compassionate. Yes, being compassionate, being empathetic. Actually, you have to. All, see, what is the difference between empathy and sympathy? Empathy is a very, very important quality. Which will really make you have great relationships in life. Empathy is when you feel what the other person is feeling. Okay? So, ask yourself. These are not like things which is tick, tick, tick marks. These are things which you need to ask yourself. Do, am I empath empathetic enough? You know, do I feel empathy for that maid servant who works in five houses and comes to mine at the sixth house and you know I'm so pissed off with her because one quarter centimeter of dirt is not cleaned you know so empathy is one quality okay anything else so any other I think the first thing that is required in your uh, if you want to be a if you want to create leaders around you the first quality is I call it a bond of relatedness Okay, you need to feel that relatedness with each other. Unless you have this background of relatedness, it is not, you can't even start the next step. You know, when I say relatedness, you should feel that connection. Or if you don't have the connection, then you make the connection. You understand? Many times we always try to get our things done. You know, do this, do that, don't do this, don't do that. But, you know, there is no background of relatedness with each other. So, the first thing you need to, uh, first thing you need to work when you are doing, uh, when you are trying to coach somebody is first establish that relatedness with each other. Next thing what you need to do is establish the bigger context. Okay, what is the bigger purpose? Let them know. Let them know okay, the purpose that we are going to have this relationship with each other is because I want to, you know, have a very clean house or I want to have a very 
peaceful uh, uh, situation even if I am not around or whatever it is. Okay? Be clear what is the context. It's not about I. First you talk about you. You should be able to manage this even if I am not around. You know? And I want, I want you to get the skill of uh, learning how to do X, Y, Z. Okay? So be clear what is the bigger context and if both of both of y'all should be clear okay both of y'all are working for the same context okay because if you're working for one reason and the other person is working for another reason then like for example i had a i had a friend who wanted to um, you know we said Charo, let's go and join one gym okay because we wanted to lose so my context was to lose weight i hate going to gyms by the way this is the first and last time i ever joined a gym and but her context was something else her context was to go and meet the people and you know laugh and enjoy and you know have an outing and one get together and find out who's there and who's not there so you know when when i am sitting and trying to coach her about being in, taking responsibility for her health it doesn't work because her context was completely different so do you get that so make sure that you both are working for the same context. The next thing is, like uh, Malika said just now, the feeling of compassion, the feeling of empathy. You, are, you should have the ability to feel what the other person is feeling. Anything else? Another very, very important, another very important aspect is that you need to be a good listener. Okay. Most of the time, we are so, people like me and all, we just love to talk and talk and talk, okay? So, we think that, you know, oh, by talking, we are going to get, but actually, communication is not about talking, you know? It's about listening. Okay? I love my profession because I do, I get to do a lot of talking, but more than talking, more important in your communication is listening. And do we, are we able to listen to what the other person is going through. So, like I told you, there are different levels on which you listen to a person. Okay? So, most of the time, people around us, we are just either ignoring them or we are pretending to be listening because most of the time, we are only bothered about our phones and you know what we have. Or even if they talk, what we are bothered is about what answer we have to give back. Rina, you have to go on mute, please. Hello, okay. So, uh, so there is something called selective listening, where we listen only to what we listen. We listen to only what is uh, what what we want to listen, and balance we don't listen. You know, that's called selective listening. Then there is something called attentive listening. You need to give your full attention when you are talking to people. And that is called attentive listening, giving your attention. But especially when you are coaching people or if you are trying to create leaders around you, what you must really work on is called uh, empathetic listening. That is, you are listening to the words of the person and you are also listening to what is the feeling behind those words. You know, if you are able to feel what the opposite person is feeling, then it will make a great difference in your coaching and creating leaders around you. Make sense what I am saying? Yeah? Another thing is that if you want to coach people, you have to make sure that there is an environment of openness and trust with each other. Do we really trust each other? It's only when you are completely trusting that person, then and that person has to be willing to be coached. Okay? Or you should be willing to be coached. Yeah. See, we are we are always, whatever your age, you are always, you, you have to be, it's two-way process. All the time I'm looking out for someone to coach me and all the time I'm seeing if I can coach somebody. Okay? So, whatever your age, you can always learn. Okay? So, when I was probably 40s, in my 40s or so, uh, one day my co I, have, I have a coach okay so then I came back and I was I was grumbling and I was saying this happened that happened and this happened that happened and you know I did this and I did that then he asked me one question he said Shobha who's 
whose appreciation are you waiting for and i said whose appreciation i couldn't understand you know and he gave me a very nice insight he said you know what heart of hearts you're waiting for appreciation and suddenly when he told me i he didn't he just asked me questions okay and then i discovered by myself that i am actually waiting for appreciation of my father you know because our mothers and fathers they are our first coaches in our life and it is very important that you have a complete relationship with your parents and i realized that whatever i do you know it's very very rare that i get a word of appreciation from my father so though though i did not say it and though i did not know it it's only when my coach made me discover something about myself and i said oh yes i realized that i am waiting for my father to say one word of appreciation you know because my father was very generous with his criticisms so we are all the time striving to <laughs> we are all the time striving to you know uh, at least be normal and then we realized so and i'm so thankful to him for that actually and then the coach gave me a very nice insight and he said you know something the way your father was grown up at that time okay in his you know he's 80 he would have been 90 i think today 88 or something he saying when he grew up he did not get any appreciation from anybody those times were different nobody really cared called and appreciated each other and nobody praised each other and all so he saying if he has not received appreciation or praise if he does not how do we expect him to give and that made so much of sense it made so much of sense you know because i realized that my husband by my father you know he does not even know to receive praise you know he wrote nine books his last book was released just before he died in when he was 84 years old and that was a brilliant book on geeta but somebody comes and told me that somebody came and i i was there i was aware you know and they said my this book you have really written this geeta in such a simple easy to understand way and he says oh you know Uh, yeah it's okay. i mean i my father really did not know how to accept praise so if he does not know how to accept praise how do you expect him to give praise and this one sentence from my coach really changed my relationship with appreciation you know and then i realized you yeah, know it doesn't matter so i want you to think about your relationship with your mother and father your mother and your father's relationship it is is called the source of all relationships okay so whether they are alive or whether they are not alive even if they are not alive you can still write a letter and be complete i want you to be complete with your relationship with your mother or your father okay and i realize that if you like it's like having a huge tv you're having you know pip and this and that and this feature and that feature but and you call the whole world to come and see your huge giant tv in your house and then the tv is not working and then you wonder why it is not working and that is because you have not plugged the source of the power without the power whatever tv you have it doesn't it doesn't matter so think about your parents as your first coaches and they are the source of your power you know you i have a problem with authority of my father then i have a problem with any kind of authority in this world all my bosses i meet all my coaches i meet i will have a problem with them but only when i when i resolve a relationship with my authority of my father then i am at peace with any other kind of authority even boys who have a problem with their mothers have a problem with all the girlfriends in their life think about it okay so one homework you can take one one you can take back from this session is that you know look at your relation because your parents are your biggest coaches they are the ones who molded you and you know gave you some basic foundation gave you your values gave you your thought process gave you know so even if they are if they are alive please go ahead talk to them you know and if they even if they are not just sit and write a letter every single thing that you felt about them good things not so good things just write it and get it out of your system make sense yeah make sense
and surround your surround yourself with you know people who have coached you and people who you would like to coach okay interesting topic i thought it's better if i don't tell you the topic so that everybody uh, i'll be meeting you only on tuesdays nowadays okay so it makes uh, this is one of the most and I, i tell you during the last year's lockdown uh, i had all the time in the world the first lockdown 2020 and uh, uh, i i can my husband is from the corporate world whoever knows him okay and i contacted this is the book i wrote okay so this is a topic that is very interesting to me it's a topic about mentoring it's a, a topic that's really close to my heart so during the lockdown time i contacted all the people who had worked for him since 1985 like 30 35 years you know i i made all of them write and all of them wrote their experiences of working with him so even when see for coaching you 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 do not you need it's not necessary that it's a senior and a junior even a junior can coach a senior or even at 26 27 he was a coach to people at that time and he had mentored so many people so what i have did is that over the 30 35 years his whole journey so the book is called journey of a corporate mentor you know and it is so nice because almost all of them they were free even though they are big shots and they were uh, corporate people because of the lockdown they were initially free they all wrote how was the experience of being mentored you know 30 years ago 20 years ago 10 years ago and that whole journey has been captured in this you know i think we have a very uh, fulfilling life because we know we made a difference you know to so many people uh, who even till today after you know still talk with so much of gratitude about about the people who have mentored them this book is of this book by the way this book became a international best seller on amazon so today i saw this book i said let me talk on this talk yeah it's available on amazon it's an international best seller that's why this yellow yellow mark is you know uh, the yeah so this is the whole story about his corporate life and how as a mentor people have you know really risen and show there was a there was a maid servant child okay who used to come to my house because i had small children i could not go out so i would teach her i would teach her uh, her studies you know and uh, i had helped her to pass she had failed twice <laughs> and another one had failed three times in english so i managed i, I taught them at home and then they got they passed their 10th standard like metric pass is a big thing for them okay and uh, this was this was long time back okay 1996 or 97 then in 90 i went to bangalore and in 1999 i came back to the first mall of bombay it was called crossword okay and and in that mall i was and this girl i had helped her to, when she got her finished her 10th standard i had helped her to get admission in college i had taken her to my old mmk college i got her some books for her so basically you what you do is you take responsibility for the whole family that works for you that is so that's one of the ways you be like a mentor for them and i went to this crossword mall a swanky mall and suddenly i someone calls me yeah shobha aunty and i was surprised and that is this girl yeah she's working for l'oreal and she's got colored hair in 1999 it was amazing to see somebody with colored hair and i said where is your mother she said your mother still a maid servant this is that india was changing at that time you know So I said, "What about college?" She says, "No, I go to college seven o'clock to ten o'clock in the morning, and then I come after that eleven o'clock onwards. I come and I work here." You know, so you have no idea that the people that you mentor and you coach, where they will be in life, you really have no idea. You know, and they'll always remember you with one warmth in your in their heart. Okay, so just a small thought. Okay, remember, say thank you, the Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru. You know, we we have that we have an shloka where we remember all our teachers and all the coaches so remember with gratitude all the people who coached you and in turn in your own small way whatever you can be a coach be a mentor you know to someone who can uh, you know remember you with a warmth in their heart make sense yeah so i hope this smile tip for today about coaching and mentoring makes 
makes a difference and i will see you all next tuesday now okay chalo okay bye yeah